We're not in Thailand anymore. <laughs> Hello from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So I got here about two days ago, flew from Bangkok, um, three months in Thailand, loved my experience there, but it was time to move on. And this is my absolute favorite country in the world. I love Vietnam, it's my second time here. The last time I was here uh, was in the north, like Hanoi and Ha Long and Ninh Binh. This time I'm in the south. But this time I'm in Ho Chi Minh, which I did not get to see the last time I was in Vietnam. You guys can probably hear how loud it is on the streets. This is what it's like here all the time from the motorbikes. It's literally just like crushingly loud all the time. Unlike in Thailand, first of all, there's more motorbikes on the road here. But secondly, they use the horn. And in Thailand, no horn. So it's much, much louder here. But anyway, this is like my second day in Ho Chi Minh. Um, just kind of got my bearings of the city yesterday, staying in a part of the city called District uh, 1, which is like the center of downtown. So plan for today is uh, I need to get a bike. So right now I'm going to a place to rent a bike. And two, um, try and explore District 1 a little bit, um, get some food. There's a big market here, basically like the central market called Bentan Market. Um, gonna check that out and really just um, explore Ho Chi Minh. One of the things about Vietnam that I love so much is the food. It's so abundant, it's so cheap, it's so good. There's literally street food on every corner. It's just like, it's a mind blowing experience to, be in, to eat in Vietnam. Um, so we're definitely gonna get some food. And, uh, but the first thing is getting a grab bike and heading to get a rental bike. Thank you. DC motor bike. problem <laughs> so they don't have any bikes um, <clears throat> the place that I wanted to go to was a recommendation from a local that I met here the other day and um, it's in like an expat neighborhood so um, it's more honest bike rentals than like downtown which is just all tourists and like scammers and so I yeah they didn't have any bikes so the guy took me to another place right down the road which also seemed pretty legit and they also don't have any bikes but they are gonna have some by four o'clock this afternoon I don't know long story short I'm gonna go back later and get a bike but for now um, I'm getting lunch and I'm getting lunch at a place called the place is called like the lunch lady and if you are into Saigon gastronomy you've probably heard about her if you're into Vietnamese gastronomy I'm sure you've heard of her she's like super famous she was made very famous by Anthony Bourdain um, and for good reason her food is phenomenal I was here the other day and had a bowl of noodles and it was like one of the best I've ever had in Vietnam so it's on this like kind of nondescript if you will little alleyway here um, and it's 
which is all just like restaurants and yeah, street eating. And that's kind of the thing you'll see about Saigon is that like, it's just interlaced with all of these like alleyways that branch off main roads and then um, just end up like back in these places that are like packed with food and stories and people and it's really really kind of cool so i'm gonna get a bottle of water somewhere first so i don't have to pay for an expensive water at the uh at the restaurant and then grab some food uh let's see down here i want a big water i don't know if i can find a big water Hello. Um, Nuak Soi? Walter Nuak Soi? Is that how you say? Right here? We're looking for water. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, bao nhiêu? Uh, nước suối nhiêu anh? Năm ngàn. Năm ngàn hả anh em dạ? Nè quay. I'm try trying to learn a few things in Vietnamese, but it's really, really hard. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing this stuff right. Nok soy is water, I believe, and bao du is how much? Five. Five. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. It's not a big water, but it is very cold. So, oh, check this out. See these things all over Vietnam. These like makeshift, I don't know, motorbikes that have been turned into like pickup trucks. <laughs> oh wow. I also see this stuff everywhere. These like little Red Bulls that people just will like drink. Uh, it's like I don't know, 250 ml Red Bulls or something like that. No, just looking, just looking. Yeah, I, I see them like literally everywhere. Okay, so this is the place. And um, she makes a new soup every day, so let's see what we have today. Yeah. Right there? Perfect. Okay. Little plastic table, little plastic chairs.
She's like boiling these fish after she, uh, I'm not really sure. Yeah. How do you say? Hello. How do you say? What type? Ah, boom. Okay. Nice. I have no idea what it is. It looks really good though. There's a bunch of like things and meat and noodles. Thank you. Come on. Oh my god, it looks incredible. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, so first thing is always the lime. Pretty much, you're always gonna see key limes on the table. Get it in your eye. Just kind of like you do in Thailand. And some chilies. These chilies, so these chilies are like fire. These like Vietnamese red chilies. These things are just like absolute fire. So yeah, I'm gonna put a bunch of those in there. Little basil, uh, this is actually, um, Thai basil. Just get comfortable and you're on your way. It even just like looks like so beautiful. I need a spoon. So basically, I believe this is um this is basically like Hue style beef. It's not Bun Bo Hue. Um but it's pretty close. It's like Saigon's version of Bun Bo Hue, basically. The thing that makes her soups so unbelievable is this stock. I mean, it's just like, unbelievably good. It's so rich, there's so much going on in it. It's just, wow. Wow. This is really good, holy crap. You see all those like little fat globules in the oil, uh, in the broth, from the meat and the whatever else is in that stock. She had these like huge things of lemongrass all tied up with herbs and stuff in there. It's obviously imparting a lot of this flavor too. So, one dish a day. She makes a new soup every day. I've heard she does sell out because once that pot of stock is gone, that's it. I'm serious, man. You bite into one of these chilies and it's like your whole afternoon is ruined. I mean, it's like crazy. It's literally one of the best stocks I've ever had in my life. You see these a lot in Vietnamese food like pork cake, beef cake, shrimp cake, crab cake. And I never know exactly what it is. It's like processed whatever into like whatever. But I'm usually not a huge fan of them. They have a bit of like a rubbery texture that is not so easy for the Western palate. But um, this one's quite nice. So after this, um, I'm going to a museum called the War Remnants Museum, which used to be called the War of Chinese, no, sorry, the Museum of Chinese and American War Crimes, which if you ask me is actually a more fitting name for the museum. See what that one gets in the comments. But anyway, you're not an American. I'm very interested in Vietnam War history, or as they call it here, the American War. I'm going to go and check it out. I also think it's really important to visit things like this when you're in foreign countries to, in a way, um, not relive the 
tragedy and horror of that period of time. But to just, you know, never forget that something that awful, you know, something that terrible happened. And by keeping it in your memory, hopefully, you won't forget history and the past won't repeat itself and something as terrible as the Vietnam War will never happen again. That's all I'm gonna say on that topic, but um, that's where I'm going after this. I don't think I'll be filming it. It's a museum. Afterwards, we're gonna check out Bent Dan Market, which is the basic, basically like the central market here in Saigon. If you're someone who likes noodle soups, Vietnam is a really, really good place to travel because they are like the staple food in this country and um, they're very good and very cheap and very abundant. Yeah. Oh wow, I'm filling up. This is a lot of food. This huge bowl of noodles, which is phenomenally good, is I think $2. I think that's, yeah, I think it's $2. I think it's less actually, 40,000 dong. So it's a little bit less than $2. It's mind blowing, right? Like this bowl in, in the United States would be $20 easily. And it would be far inferior. That's why, man, like you just. You travel, and you get out of that US, United States bubble, man. Puts a whole lot of things into perspective particularly eating. Uh, yeah. That'll do? Yeah. Seven. 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 So that was absolutely incredible and my bowl of noodles and my bottle of water was 70,000 which is like uh, three dollars. So, <clears throat> gives you an idea of just how cheap Vietnam is. Vietnam is really uh, an extremely cheap country. There's a little coffee shop right up here that I was at the other day that I really enjoyed. I haven't had coffee yet, and there's no way I can go a day without having Vietnamese coffee. So. That's what I'm going to get now. <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> YouTube. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Vietnamese people are very nice, very friendly, just like Thai people. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Uh, Cafe Sua? Nam? Nam? Mm. Yeah. Right, okay. Same, same? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think that guy remembered me from the other day. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you've never had Vietnamese coffee, it really is something very special. The way they brew it, traditionally, uh, it's called cafe sua or black coffee with um, or filtered coffee with uh, sweetened condensed milk and they take it and they put it in um, this metal filter which is called a fen I believe and it's basically the coffee the ground coffee mixed with water here I'll show you easier to show you than just keep talking
So this is the uh, fen, I believe it's called. And then this is very, very hot, so I have to do this very quickly, but. I literally just burned my finger, but you get the point. So the coffee is filtered through here and it drips into the sweetened condensed milk on the bottom, which is that white layer right there. And so you can get this hot or iced. Most people I think actually drink it iced because it's so hot here and also because if you get it hot like this, you have to wait for it to filter and um, most people don't want to do that. If you get it iced, basically the way they make this is they filter coffee in the morning like a large quantity of it and it kind of sits at like room temperature and then when anybody orders iced coffee they just take that mix it with the sweetened condensed milk over ice um, but I kind of like the hot because I like it's not I like sitting here waiting for it watching the motorbikes go by um, seeing it drip into the milk it's all kind of part of the experience for me um, and I also just like a hot cup of coffee. The taste is something between like, uh, uh, I don't even know, a mocha and just straight up dark chocolate. Like it's, it's really has a heavy chocolate undertone to it. And if you've, if you've never tried it, um, it, it's really just something that you kind of have to experience in this life. It's, it really is that good. If you're a coffee drinker, this is really the, the best coffee in the world. Um, and unfortunately, you're probably not gonna get it in the United States. You're probably not gonna get it anywhere outside of Vietnam. You just kind of have to come here and drink it here. You can get Vietnamese coffee in the United States, but it's, I mean, from experience, like it's just not, I don't care how authentic the place is, it's not going to taste like this because it's going to be for a, a generic Western palate. You know what I mean? People who drink like filter coffee every day. Um, so, I'm here for a little bit, then the museum. Just leaving the War Remnants Museum now. Really, really interesting. Um, very powerful displays. Really, really good uh, exhibit. If you're in Saigon, definitely worth checking out. <clears throat> it's only 40,000 dong, so not even two dollars. You know what I mean for a ticket. So really, really very, very good. But right now, I'm just walking down towards um, Benthan Market, which is the main central market. Like I said, here in Saigon, in uh, pretty much like right in the center of the city in District 1. And so, let's figure out how we get there. One of the things that you see a lot in um, Vietnamese cities like Hanoi and here in Ho Chi Minh are these like really beautiful like tree-lined boulevards where you have these like humongous trees just like lining these streets. Basically French urban architecture more or less or urban planning. It's, you know, these cities were really designed during like the French occupation of Vietnam and you really see it in the way like there's a lot of French colonial architecture that's still here and these like tree-lined boulevards are very, very French. And the other thing about Ho Chi Minh City is that crossing the streets here is a humongous undertaking. And 
and if you just wait for like an opportunity to cross, it probably will never come. So at some point you kind of just have to like go and hope no one hits you. <laughs> oh wait. Yeah, here's an opening. Kind of a rare opening there. Saigon is huge. It's a really, really big city. It's, it, it I, I liken it to the difference between like Bangkok and Chiang Mai. Um, between Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi. Um, Hanoi seems like a country village compared to Ho Chi Minh. It's just really massive. And it's, the way it's set up is like in numbered districts. And district one is like the center of the city, like backpacker hub. If you're only here for a couple days, district one is like a good place to stay. But, um, District 3, District 5, District 5 is Chinatown, District 3 is, uh, I, think, I think, a lot of expats, District 2, a lot of expats. Um, <clears throat> I'm staying in District 1. It's just easier to get around, and if you're only here for a short time, most of the stuff you want to see is in District 1. But if you're, if you're looking for, like, uh, a really, like, more authentic, not a lot of tourists, uh, Vietnamese um, type of neighborhood, probably District 3 or District 5 would be a better place to stay. District 1 is kind of touristy and there are like, you know, the Dolce & Gabbana, Louis Vuitton stores that you see kind of popping up in Vietnam, but um, it's just, it is a nice central hub. It makes getting around a lot easier. If you have a bike, none of this matters. You can just stay wherever you want. This is like a hardcore row of like, I don't even know, inflatable toys slash beach toys slash bathing suits slash weights and yoga mats. Part of the city, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of random tennis rackets. It's pretty weird. It's like this whole block it goes like all the way down from where I just came. The motorbike parking on the sidewalks always gets me in Vietnam and you get these guys that just like turn into makeshift like uh, parking attendants basically because all this is like paid parking um, all these bikes yeah oh wow so the market is right down there um, I actually had some pretty good bun cha at this place the other day. Right here. Quan Hua. It's probably not how you pronounce it. But if you're looking for good bun cha in Saigon, that place is really good. Hello. So this is Saigon too. This is Hanoi and another, this is kind of Hanoi too. You just get these like alleys that branch off of the main streets and they're just full of people's like basically homes and places to eat and stuff. And it's actually really interesting to kind of walk back here and just like, Man, I just wish I spoke Vietnamese so I could like actually talk to people, but uh, it's just like so, such a difficult language. Um, oh wow.
like some dinner cooking. Hey. 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 <laughs> okay, yeah, these dogs did not like me. Remember when I said I don't fuck with street dogs? They don't look like street dogs, though. Oh. So these are uh, these are the rose apples that I was saying uh, I had like earlier um, in my soup that she shredded. These are the rose apples. You see them like in Thailand a lot too, and I guess Vietnam as well. Oh, that dragon fruit looks phenomenal, as does that mango, or maybe not mango. That's pumpkin, I think, actually. Wow. So one thing about Southeast Asia, like the produce is far and away better than anything we have in the West. So, so fresh and so good. Yes. Hello. I have to put my face mask on. So this is Benthan Market. Uh, this is my first time in here. And it looks like uh, there's definitely going to be some food which is expected. It's a Vietnamese market. Um, uh, I just hope it's not too late in the day and all these food stalls are closed. Uh, definitely looks like something is open. Oh, this stuff is phenomenal. Ah, hello. Hello. Hi. What do you want? Um, I want this sugar cane. Okay. How much? Fifteen thousand. Okay, just one. One. Yeah. You may I? Twenty thousand. Oh, thank you. They make this uh like pressed juice from like pure sugar cane. Which I haven't had since I was in Vietnam last time. And it's like really, really good. It's very sweet, it's very cold, very refreshing. It's really, really good. So good. I had this in Cuba too. It's everywhere in Havana. It's phenomenal. How do you say Nuak Mia? Nuak. Nuk. Nuk. Mi. Mi. Nuk. Mi. Nuk. 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 Mm-hmm. Sugar cane, okay. Trying to learn. <laughs> wow, I'm already done. That was really good. Uh, some prepared foods happening down here.
Ah, man, I think a lot of places are closed. It's kind of 3.30 in the afternoon, but maybe these are just early places. I don't know. Um, that other place was open, though. It looked pretty good. Hello. Hi. You know something? Yeah, you notice my hand. Pancakes? Yeah. yeah, maybe. I'm just looking right now. Should I buy some drink? Uh, I just had a drink, oh. actually. I'm actually going to go back to the first place I saw, um, which was right over here. It looked pretty good. <laughs> Oh yeah, this place, yeah. Thank you. Got some pork ribs on rice. <laughs> Grilled pork ribs. Because I think she's grilling them like right there. So I think these are actually pretty fresh. Can I go back and look? I got away and look. Go away, I'm going away now. Yeah, that's why I wanted to order grilled meat because she's sitting there like grilling it right there. It looks really good. <sighs> per usual, I'm generating quite a bit of attention talking into this camera. <laughs> it's like something wrapped in sugar cane, I think. Looks good. Thank you. Oh, very nice. Fish sauce, I think. What? Yeah. Mok mom? Nook mom. Nook mom. Yeah. yeah, fish sauce with uh, probably green papaya and carrot. And then, yeah, here's the pork. Look, looks pretty great. Nắp nhắp qua mời chị uống gì nhắp ơi. Chị qua chị hỏi chị. Yeah, so I just finished up eating that and I just wanted to take like a quick stroll back here see what we had this is like obviously the clothing section of the market <laughs> but there's not a lot in this market to be honest it's just um it's like kind of a typical vietnamese market lots of chinese made uh junk for sale lots of it actually like all of this Pretty much get whatever you want at a heavily inflated price, but you can bargain your way down here, I'm sure. But yeah. It's quiet right now, too. I think it's probably better to come here like early morning. Nuts. Oh, dried shrimp. It's all dried shrimp. Nice. So... Anyway, I'm going to head out. I actually just got a phone call from the bike dealer that uh, the bike I was looking to rent is back in the shop. So I'm going to go take a look at it, see if it's worthwhile. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, oh man, you can smell that durian. This is all durian, right? 
world's most pungent fruit. <laughs> it's good. It's just like, you know that you're like in a durian area. Within like five meters of that fruit, you can smell it. <laughs> Uncut like that too. When they cut it, it's even stronger, obviously. All right, I'm going to the bike shop. I'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> 